up, everybody? Not Good morning. Welcome to, again, the Toy Effort Podcast. We're back here again. It's your boy, Jerry Juice. We also got Scott Jim here, sunny North Carolina, and we're back. What do we got? Dad, Dad. CJ will do it. He told us he's awake this time, so any moment now, we might have him too. That would be a full cast, and that's quite the vibe. Everybody, good morning. Welcome to again the Toy Effort Podcast. We're back here again. It's your boy Jerry Juice. We also got Scott Jim here, Sunny North Carolina, and we're we'll back. What do we got? Dad, Dad. CJ will do it. Told us he's awake this time, so any moment now we might have him too. That would be a full cast.
What's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to, again, the Toy Network Podcast. We're back here again. It's your boy, Jerry Juice. We also got Josh and Pierre Zai, North Carolina Hemp Reviews back. We got Dad Dad. CJ will do it. told us he's awake this time, so any moment now we might have him too. That would be a full cast. Everybody, good morning. Welcome to again the Toy Effort Podcast. We're back here again. It's your boy Jerry Juice. We also got Gotch and Pierre Zai, North Carolina Hemp Reviews back. We got Dad Dad. CJ will do it. Told us he's awake this time, so any moment now we might have him too. That would be a full cast. Ganja mode. <laughs> wow, that's good. Yeah, it says okay. We're good. We're live. We'll thrive. We're back. Let's go. Oh. How's Uh-oh. everybody doing this morning? I'm Are doing they- fantastic. What's up, everybody? <clears throat> we are back. Welcome. I know it's been a weird couple of weeks. Been a little, you know, life happens. Okay, we're people. You all know. Life happens. My boy Jerry got a baby coming soon. Okay, like life happens, all right? So we're back, getting back in the swing of things. As always, let us know in the chat what you're smoking on. Hope you had a blessed week. Hope you're having a good weekend. Jerry, what are you blazing on? I currently got the rest of the La Bamba from Jay Liddy's packed into this bowl right here. Oh, um, yeah? Liked it. It was very desserty though. Very desserty. Mm. Afterwards, I don't know how I'm gonna complain about it being desserty when I'm about to show that I'll get into some sherbanger afterwards. <laughs> See that off? <laughs> Pretty desserty. Uh, so oh, it should yeah. be should be quite fun. Should be quite fun. Also, both pretty potent. I think the little mama was like 29, and this next one's gonna be 36 percent. So two bong rips should wow. really be good for today. Hell yeah, Ganja Bear, what you got rolled up? You got something pretty nice rolled up, don't you? Yeah, that's um, 
some crypto chronic and tropicana cookie shake from a special company i'm not going to say their name on this live but we also got some crumble and isolate from another special company i don't really want to say their name on live you know we got to keep these deals covenant secret i don't want to say secret but you know because you can know but if you know you know if you don't you don't like you know you know I guess you, you got to keep a little something for people in the Discord. You can't just come to YouTube and expect to get all of the insight. You know, I feel you. I got a bowl of Oreos from one of those special companies as well. And if you want to know about who those special companies are, hop in the Discord and then you can know and might even win giveaways from them. So just saying. Just saying. All I'm trying to win. Uh, Cheers, y'all. Gatekeeping companies that sell out in five minutes, anyways. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You gotta, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. Cheers, y'all. Uh, too. Cause look, bro, I, I want, I want to, I want to make sure everybody smoke good and pay less. But I want to eat too. I want to eat too. Totally. I feel that. <sighs> oh. My wow, look at that, y'all. Just just take a second and look at that, please. Ooh, uh, sugar. Wow. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a wee little bit. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm -mm. His concentrate oh. prices don't make sense. Mm, no. Quality though. You would think it's, I mean, it can be. No, it's not the best, but, like, you get the same on the screen, bro, for, like, 25 to G, if you're lucky. Mm. Yeah. I'll have to try them sometime. I, I have not tried their concentrates yet. I've had a few, like, there's some companies you buy from that you, their, pre, their price is a little questionable, and then you start to realize, like, ah, this is some isolate and some distillate and some terps whipped. And then there's some people that do it, you know, super, super legit, so... That's cool. Yeah, anything named a batter, or a sugar, a or <coughs> diamond, every one of those THCA wise, one hundred percent some distillate and some terps whipped up. Nothing wrong with it. It does bring down concentrate prices to a pretty affordable level for most people. But absolutely. Then we got his prices. <laughs> They're like half of yeah. What yes. I, see other people selling it at and i understand a lot of this industry has a 30 to 40 percent profit margin to account for <coughs> discounts etc but it's also just kind of interesting so because then we're getting to all like the rosins coming out and it, they're coming out expensive they're yep out pricey so yep GHCA concentrate wise we're in this weird area where we now have them all available yeah, I, I'm a, yep. I, the prices never make sense. Mm -mm. And no, not like the flower side where everything's already adding up and making sense. <laughs> right. Well, I think what it, one thing that happened when you started having you know the all cannabinoid market, the loophole, you have isolates you can buy and distillates you can buy, and it it kind of brought down. There's ways to make concentrates that are sufficient for most that are more cost effective than straight live rosin. But the kind of byproduct of that is now it opened up the market for a cool. So there is this price bracket for a lot of these concentrates that work well. But we can now charge, you know, premium since this is not that. It kind of, you know what I mean? It's like it does open up a cheaper market, but then it exposes where you can now exploit the price for live rosin or stuff that's not just isolate and distillate batter whipped up, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a few big providers that I think are out there. Uh, and you can get the ounce of the diamond distillate for a range of prices. Uh, yeah. Essentially, if you see a diamond distillate card and it's costing you more than, I mean, even $30 a gram seems a little bit pushing it, right? But $30 yeah. a gram, depending on the terps that are being utilized sure it's probably the top you want to kind of pay for a diamond distillate cart just 
based on what's on the inside. The the actual unit costs three dollars if they're buying them in a very minimal quantity. Yeah, so right, right. Cart. These companies probably yep. are buying bulk, so if you're buying a hundred plus, you're getting them more like two dollars a cart. Uh, you fill it up as you know, ninety seven percent. The 90, 95 to ninety seven percent up with the diamond distillate is three yep. percent terps. Terps are pretty affordable too, uh, yeah. especially what some of these brands are using. Luckily, a few brands are taking some pride in the terpenes that they're utilizing, which is good to see. Yep. But it does yep. kind of make you start to want live rosin. Yes. Decide to take off, but that becomes the pressed flower, and this is where the loophole becomes a little bit more interesting. Mm hmm. Yep. <clears throat> no, for sure. And I think it's what what you hope is with if it gets descheduled or rescheduled or whatever that you you'll have maybe the price come down on some of those live rosins and, and other things as well. But at least you've got like you said it makes you want live rosin and there's a bit of a blissful ignorance for people that maybe have never been in like a medical or recreational state. And they, this is all they've kind of ever had. But if that is you, if you're listening and that is you, when you can get to a medical state and try a dispensary card. And I implore you, it, you'll, you'll take one puff and be like, okay, Not I know why this is different. Not all yeah. True, which is <laughs> true, true. Because like <clears throat> true leave, which many people know as the, mm -hmm a-hole trying to ruin everything in your state hemp wise or as mm -hmm. the, uh how the heck are they in every state on the east coast dispensary company true yep. leave there doesn't even have live rosin there's not a single dispensary in connecticut who has live <laughs> rosin yet like it's, it's crazy not in all markets crazy it's insane and they all just like brag about what they did to get their terpene set uh, yeah. So s certain medical things, like you find, it's funny how you have to actually search for it. People here go up to Massachusetts usually, honestly, to mm. grab some and bring it back. Yeah. Uh, but once you take a hit off a live rosin cart from a dispensary, because if you go in there and you end up walking out with your disty cart, you're gonna think, "Wow, THCA game is got this." Now, I, there's even if you get the live rosin carts that are out there in the THGA market, one, if you somehow got it on a budget, it's not going to hit like the ones from the dispensary because For sure. THGA companies have to go through so much more in order to achieve live rosin for you and hey. get it into a cart. Than it hey, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. You know why? Let's hear it. Let's hear it. <clears throat> I beg to differ because guess what? I, myself personally, I've been able to get a live rosin full gram for forty five dollars. That was damn near better than any dispensary cart that I tried. And I didn't hit a plethora of carts from True Leaf, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I hit the I didn't hit the little cool last ones that's like one hundred and twenty four fucking cart, bro. It's so crazy. They had these carts. Like the device you hit it with, it's like fifty dollars, like the like but the pod itself is like ninety dollars. These carts are fucking stupid. Well, yeah. they're like Truly, truly is not a but sense of a medical state. They got some gas at live rosin carts when you can get one, bro. Truly got some little gas carts now. Don't yeah, count. Their prices will never make sense. They, they will take not when they dollars from you just because they've set up monopolies in the states. They don't mm -hmm. accurately price compared to West Coast dispensaries, Southeast or Southwest dispensaries. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, even when you get up to like Maine and New Hampshire, it's just like away from corporate weed. It's not that bright. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because sure. All they gotta do is press a flower in a dispensary. They don't have mm -hmm. to worry about the Delta Nine percentage. They don't gotta worry about the uh, the effects. What else happens when you press it? What they're yep. gonna press a pure rosin when you're making yep. a thca live a rosin and you got to still keep it under the point three you got two options which are break the law and ship out something that's definitely hot or could be hot and 
potentially get in trouble if something was to happen. Which yep. at that point you add on to the price of the cart to weed out <clears throat> people who would first of all rat on you because rats will buy the cheaper items, <laughs> the more expensive <laughs> ones typically. And second of all, uh, in order, in case you ever get legal fees, you prepare for it. It's a business strategy, which some owners mm. crazily yep. admit to in the hemp market. And it's so dangerous and can ruin the whole thing for everyone. Yep. Regardless of what they're doing, uh, there's the other people who have figured out that if you press at a very minimal temperature for a very low time, the yield is kind of awful on flour, mm -hmm. but you can continuously scrape off that <coughs> awful yield, go back in, mm -hmm. and achieve something like what Crisp did. And it's very pure, very nice and fresh tasting, but... Gosh, when you're thinking about paying about forty dollars for point five, point six, it's yeah, adds up fast. <clears throat> well, it sucks too. Like the way it's set up with hemp and marijuana being two different things legally, they don't give like think about how much product. If you're like a hemp company, a massive hemp farm, right, and you're growing, or even if you want to just to make straight concentrates, and you want to go straight live rosin, even the amount that you're going to press that is just going to naturally through the process be above the legal limit that you have. It's not like the government has given an outlet for those companies to, okay, well now the product that is over the limit that is legally marijuana, you can wholesale to dispensaries and the product that is under and called hemp, you can sell to the public as hemp since you're a business or to other hemp stores. No, it's basically you're in one aisle or the other. If you grow medical marijuana for dispensaries, yeah, it's, there is more of a streamlined red tape process. So on one hand, it's more strict yet more relaxed because you have a process to follow. But then on the hemp side, I feel so bad for these larger businesses, not large like mainstream like cookies, but large that have a bigger operation because they're growing product. And if it is not compliant, which just by the natural process, <clears throat> a lot of it won't be. It's nothing they're doing on purpose to make it non-compliant. They just have to get rid of. And it's like you think about – you know, if, if you make 100% of a product and you can only even use 40% of it, the other 60 you got to offload, that's yeah. just, I mean, that's, there'd be, there's so much more practical ways you could, that this could be done, you know, and God forbid, if it was legal. The fed shows up <clears throat> your farm. Well, it's like, and finds hot product in the field that they randomly decide to test right now. Uh, some reason it's happening again. I thought we yes. were beyond this point where we kind of let the hemp farmers and the weed farmers do as they were supposed to. But recently, the Fed's not only been doing that, but they've been showing up and seizing it both from the farming operations and dispensaries, just kind of confusing everybody. So we're talking about a little bit what uh, is going on with the legislation. They just, just kind of like it's not good on the cannabis side either. No. Well, and again, like you said, I thought we were we were past that. And it's like, it's weird. You're starting to see, especially in the last few weeks, maybe month or so, like these kind of micro regressive movements coming out in different states, like in Kansas on Marijuana Moment, lawmakers consider proposal to jail farmers who grow hemp with too much THC. Like there's just, all, there's these weird little regressive things that are happening. And, and what's odd is, Kind of at the higher level, it seems to be a really bipartisan push for at least rescheduling and de or descheduling and potentially just federal legalization. So it's weird that while kind of on a higher level, it seems to be bipartisan, then you see all these weird little bullshit, for lack of a better term, things that are going on in these different states, like Colorado trying to censor people that are posting online about it. Like, Bye. it's crazy. <coughs> That's crazy trying to regulate somebody by growing a plant with too much THC. If you're going to let them grow, let them grow. Like, if you, especially growing outdoor, growing outdoor, like the sun, you have no control over what the sun finna do to that plant. The plant may plant, I mean, the sun may plant stronger. Well, not God. You know that for it's like, <laughs> like, growing outdoor actually make plants have more THC. Yeah. It's like scientifically proven somehow. Not more THC always, but even more robust, robust cannabinoids mm -hmm. is more pungent always. Yeah, 
it, it's almost like a, a trust fund baby versus someone that has a lot of struggle in their life. It's like that trust fund baby may have a lot of shiny, cool looking things, but the other one's gone through stress. They're resilient. They're strong. They're ro- they're deep, you know, for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> but how you going to stop somebody? You going to let them grow. They, you can't test that shit at your crib. Nobody had a bread for that. I mean, you can, but who had the bread? You expect everybody to have like the 30 or 2K, two k two two hundred twenty k to get a little test kit, or you know what I'm saying? And, or and, I, and it's, it's gonna yeah. cost like it costs a lot to get some bud tested. I, I yeah. know it's a, yes. a couple of thousands. Well, and it's so dumb that like like just well, I can go yeah, on Amazon yeah, yeah. and buy a home brewery kit, make my own alcohol, my own kitchen. But like, if they do something like that, or like they try to control home growing, or you have to send your crop in, it's like fuck off. That's not like no. What are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, testing you can get tests done for four hundred. It's not mm. full panel. I think it's like a couple of them though. Um, and you only send in, I believe, I, what is it, seven grams? So you have to send in a quarter of a product, four hundred dollars, and they'll send you back the percentages of cannabinoids mm. um i'm sure the government doesn't make a profit off of it though when they do it themselves so there's not that yeah. aspect to it True. the insane point though that's way i guess you can really phrase it is you literally can plant a cbd seed and True. the CBD seed can all of a sudden pop out with up to like four percent THC Bro, on a variation I did it myself. from the last plant. I did um, it myself. I planted the CBD plant. The, the bud that it came from, no feeling from it other than like relax. You know what I'm saying? First time I smoked it, bro, I was as high as I've been to this day. Or CBD, CBD. The rest yeah. of the nugs, though, you know what I'm saying? They had that CBD feel, but one of them nugs was so fucking hot. Mm. So caliente, and you know what I'm saying. If I was to t- if I was to test that one, that one could have been who knows, fucking twenty four percent, twenty five, whatever. You know what I'm saying. But the rest of the nugs, they did hit like CBD. But it could be that one nug off the plant as well, like that one little. You know what I'm saying? Oh, for sure. Because the cannabinoids can't. They don't always spread evenly. That's not how it works. Nothing spreads evenly. You know what I'm saying? Right. Nutrients don't spread evenly throughout plants. So how are the cannabinoids going? You know, it don't work like that. You know, or some nugs are like cured, not cure. Like a nug can cure itself on the fucking plant, but not all nugs can cure itself mm-hmm. on the plant. You know what I'm saying? There's no. so many things no. that go into that. Like, yeah. it don't even make sense. And this is why they have a variation in what they allow when it comes to percentages and testing. Now, real quick, why is California State allowing a 10% variation is a whole different conversation. <laughs> but. Your top cola compared to a bottom nug that you got that's been hiding in the middle of the plant might have five plus percent difference. Absolutely. In THC content from <clears throat> each other. Like you literally could have <clears throat> a long stalk of a plant that is both legally hemp and marijuana by the current standards. That's what like- man. Is, like, bro. Literally the same fucking branch. You know, yeah. <coughs> and by <coughs> it's crazy. certain laws and interpretations, mislabeling marijuana as hemp is just as bad. Yes. Okay. Like, yeah. We are not in like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It doesn't make sense. This is the continuation of us having a government creating laws that doesn't understand the actual plan. Absolutely. Creating laws that purposely have loopholes and purposely have the ability to backtrack, mm-hmm. to regress uh, yep. when necessary. It is, yeah, and it's, yeah. I, I wonder why. Like, what's the, <clears throat> what's the, especially with an election year? Because it's weird. Like I said, on one hand, you've got, <clears throat> you've got, <clears throat> kind of a bipartisan effort. It seems like you've got the right and the left, without being too political, kind of pushing in their own different way for at least rescheduling. I think everyone's starting to kind of see that. But then you've got 
like why? Why would Colorado, one of the states that was a pioneer in the medical movement 10 years ago, not want their own people to post online about the – and at first I thought it was a hemp thing because the local – Businesses that have to go through such red tape thought as found as a threat to their business, which still is fucked up to, to try to censor someone online. But it wasn't even that. It was literally about anything. You could, if you went online and posted, I have trouble with XYZ and I took NyQuil and it helped. Nope, banned. Like they wanted that. And now they've made a caveat for cannabis saying, as long as you follow every like state and local law, you, you know, you're allowed to, as long as you're talking about your own experience, which we all do, we have disclaimers, all that shit, but it's, they still didn't specify for anything else, like taking a, a fucking throat, like a cough drop and talk, oh, I really like this one. It tastes great. It reminds me of a childhood candy. Nope. Next, we have to ban you. And it's like, why that just, see, I would get Kansas doing that, maybe trying that Texas, maybe, but like, it's like Colorado, what the fuck are you doing? And why? Like, this has brought your states. I, I'm a native of Colorado. It brought them so much revenue. And, like, it's just like a slap in the face to the whole community, in my opinion. <clears throat> so it's, it's, it's weird, you know? And you, you wonder why. I hope that what you're starting to see, at least now, as November's approaching, is there's more pressure on the DEA. Uh, I think that just came out another, the other day. Um, who is it? Yeah, the FDA now is putting pressure on them. And the, the head of the FDA told the DEA, please do not delay your rescheduling. Like, you've had the HHS recommendation for months. What are you doing? So you wonder if they're going to... Part of me... And this is this is putting on a tinfoil hat for a second. But part of me feels like the DEA already knows what they're going to do. And is somehow one or both sides of the political aisle know as well and are trying to utilize that for their election campaign. I would not be surprised if very close to the election, the DEA comes out with whoosh, or right after, and it happens to totally follow a narrative of whoever won, which be, would be very interesting to see, <clears throat> you know, so. But. It's wild. I mean, you got to get changed at some point you know <coughs> it's just crazy that you can get banned simply for talking about a, a cough drop <coughs> it's insane dude and if it goes into if they're still talking about it, i believe if it goes into effect it'll be 2025 but i just it makes no it makes no sense like and what's funny you people will use the argument and i think this is so cheap especially being a parent they'll use the argument right for any sort of censorship like well, don't you want to, you know, protect kids from getting their, you know, these products in their hands? Oh, fucking course. What person in the right mind wants a minor to ingest this shit? No one in their right mind. And it's like, that's not what we're talking about. Yes, don't have a package that's available to a nine-year-old that looks like Fruity Pebbles that's a thousand milligram Rice Krispie Treat. Not good. And everyone agrees on that. But there is absolutely a way to do things and have regulations in place that protect children from these products while also not prohibiting adults from getting effective medication. You know? Like, you can do both. <clears throat> I mean, but the thing, what really just don't make sense is, at the end of the day, a minor can't buy the product, even if they wanted to, you feel me? So, okay, they could see it on the shelf looking all sweet and pretty, but you can't get that shit, so it don't matter. 100%. You, 100%. I feel like you. it's pretty at yeah, blunt packs and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That don't stop yep. the blunt pack from being pretty. You know why? Because you can't buy it. If you don't have an ID, you, probably, you can't buy it, right? Yeah, right. So, if they was to find it in somebody else's possession, that's that. That's on, that's on that person for at that point. Whoever bought it at that point is on them. That's their Absolutely. fault because sure. they had it out in the open, <laughs> ready, like able to grab. If you can't buy it, like you know what I'm saying? Okay, mm -hmm. it's cool ass looking guns. It's guns that have the fire as clean as fucking slick as you know what I'm saying. You got gold deagles with fucking hand like wooden and encrypted. You know, like bro, yep. crazy shit. Yep. But it don't stop you from being able to customize your gun because it look cool. You know what I'm saying? I could put, I could put fucking, I could make a SpongeBob Glock. 
Nothing Absolutely. stops you making a SpongeBob Glock. I could sell a SpongeBob Glock fucking kit type. Not, I can't, but you feel me? Mm-hmm. If I was a distributor of guns, I could do some shit like that, and nothing would stop me because you know why? You have to have an ID to go get that shit. Now, if a kid mm-hmm. was to see one in a crib and were like, oh my God, SpongeBob Glock, this looks so cool. Mm-hmm. It's my fault for letting them even see that shit. Sure, sure. Well, I think it, I think it's a lot of like the the having the right to versus the common sense should you right. And I think you're exactly right. Like, you could you could make a uh, uh, SpongeBob Glock. If you go into most gun shops, you're probably not going to see a 50 cal sniper that looks like a Nerf gun. And there's a common sense reason for that, right? You could build one. You could sell. There's nothing stopping you, right? Because you're not going to have a nine year old walk into the gun store by himself and buy a firearm. No shit. And I totally agree with you. It's like, oh, at the end of the day, it comes down to whoever owns that or the product or whatever they bought in their possession, especially if you're a parent. Like, that's even a heightened level of responsibility. But you got anyone around. It's like, you have to, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. The company can make shit look however they want to, to make a cool product for an adult to purchase. That adult has a responsibility when using those products to not let that get in the hands of someone that is not, that it's not supposed to be for, for sure. Absolutely. I feel that. For sure. Well, my say you can't make it look cool. Yeah. Yeah, you, you got to have just have a plain container and it can have yeah. like the product specifications on it. That's it. Mm. And on top of that, uh, yeah, they don't let you name it. Like if it's sour diesel, you have some weird medical name that sounds something like hibiscus mingus or something. Um, really? You know, and it's not like a real one name but yeah like, sure they come up with some weird medical name and said for it and then you can go yep. use this translation tool to see what the real genetics of it are wild like bro why you even gotta do all that like bro. yeah that's it makes crazy. the kids not want that's it crazy. they think but then the kids still smoke weed instead they sometimes actually go and buy the delta eight products so are we to mm. blame the Delta Eight products, or are we to blame the stupid Connecticut no, rules that make you I mean, look at a plain, about... unlabeled black container that says hibiscus mingus? <laughs> You're not even letting people know what they're getting for real, yeah. uh-huh. right? People like what? I don't want no hibiscus peanut butter. If I get, but if I get some pink like rice, and it's called hibiscus indica, or something, they'll say <laughs> with hints of citrus is what the bud tender will tell you. That's like, yeah, that's like if every pill bottle was like, you went to buy Advil and it's like ibuprofenian or you know, or like you know, for Tylenol, it's acetaminophen, XL, Dithello, whatever, you know, whatever. It's like that's crazy. But it's not even like not they're the doing the like genetics as the name. It's just right. some, like random, just some random like, fucking botanical thing weird that's wild i had no idea that did that they and like in colorado they had everything was child safe but there were still like chocolate bars that look cool and you know sour patch kids stuff and things like that um but they did it where uh when i first started in the industry it wasn't this way you could some stuff was child safe you know like this some stuff was just a just a like you got a rice krispie treat wrapped up in cellophane you walk out with that and then they passed a law where you had to have a bag and so, like, the next time you went into a dispensary, if you didn't have one, every dispensary was equipped with them and would give it to you for free. And it was a child-safe nylon bag. It was a really big white – they have white and black ones. And then you take that with you every time you go to the dispensary, and that's what you would put all of your product in and zip up before you would walk out of the store. And then you were legally allowed to transport – you know, if you got pulled over or driving home, show the receipt, and here's my child-safe packaging, and then you're fine. Uh, and some dispensaries, if you walked into a shop without one, they give you a second one for free. Some dispensaries, like the one I worked at, would charge you like two bucks for another one because we had to pay for them. But it was uh, it was interesting, and I think they still do that to this day. Even if you get like something in a child safe package, it goes in your child safe bag when you leave. But not playing no games. Mm-mm. And but even something like that, it's like that's great. Like at least then it's you know secure with secure for transport. And then Ganja Bear, to your point that not their responsibility at that point like it's just not it's the responsibility of who possesses that to keep it for themselves and not put it in the hands of people that don't want or need it and not even just children but what if someone has adverse reactions to thc and doesn't like it or have never tried it and like oh i want some chocolate holy shit i need that person for sure for sure because then that's really because mine is the main talk topic of discussion when it comes to people not against though but you're right you don't need to think about that a lot that the people that just can't handle THC are burnt. Like, 
all right, you that's that goes along the same lines, but imagine Graham Graham, bro. Graham right. Graham 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 just want a little cookie, bro. <laughs> Man, you got bro, you got the fucking pots of hoy out, cutting the chips Graham away. Graham be flying. <laughs> and Graham Graham, her I she can't even read for real. She just see the pots of hoy, she just see a hoy and she like, oh hell yeah, for this shit hoy. No. Now she's fucking bait. Now she in the hospital, bro. You, you just gave Graham Graham a fucking heart attack. What is up with you? Oh, that's hilarious. Like, <laughs> Can you imagine? That reminds me of the episode of uh, that '70s show when Hyde makes edible brownies and the parents end up eating them at the garage sale and they get obliterated. Do you imagine getting Grandma high? Oh, got made that a skit. Oh yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Oh, she wants a couple cookies, has some nighttime tea. Come check on Grandma. She's fucking flying. So how should they handle it? I mean, there's other herbs out there in the world, though, that they don't regulate that have equal but different effects on the body. You Absolutely. Know, I mean, they do grow a lot of herbs for... but Because some states are making it feel like you're walking into a pharmacy, a pharmacy that only deals with pot. Some states are making it you walk in and it feels like a store themed around marijuana products and they have all the different marijuana products and cases for you to look at and choose from and it's two different complete vibes and then, and then there's some states where y you know you really just order on your phone or a tablet when you walk in and some guy throws it at you over a counter which i wouldn't even say qualifies as the pharmacy feel but i guess you could kind of group it like a drive-through pharmacy it's... maybe yeah <laughs> There's no advice given. Nobody helps you. You just punch it in on a tablet and then walk up to the counter. And the guy's like, okay, are you ready to pay? Cash your card. Why couldn't you yeah. have taken the order too? Like, <laughs> Yep. I don't know. I don't know. I always liked the places that were kind of a blend that didn't necessarily feel like super medicinal, like you're in a pharmacy, but it wasn't like... I feel like this is just a polished plug behind a wall at a drive through You know, the people that are kind of almost like it was set up almost like an Apple store. If that, that's probably not the best analogy, yeah. but clean. But, you know, there's people behind a the counter. They got the product out. You can look at. And I miss in Denver. It changed at, in, at first. You had it just in mason jars on the counter. People would open it up. You, you could you couldn't touch it, but you could smell it, you know, hold the jar, kind of turn it, check out the nug structure. Um, and then it had to be in um closed jars that only staff could open but staff could still open you could smell and then i believe forgive me if i'm wrong i think when i moved it was you could look at the flower but there was not opening of any jar they would have like a one nug and like a closed sealed thing you could look at and that was it just huh. crazy it's like people kind of be able to smell their i get i get not letting people touch it of course but let people smell the damn flower their like nose nose uh, yes Oh, bro, I, I do like when you can look very at nice when they can open yep. up the tub or yep. mason jar, sea vault, whatever yep. they got, and be like, "Hey, look at all the bud." Yeah, it gives you a good vibe. Let's just that's the one like thing I like about the at least know what you're walking out with because mm -hmm. it, if you bought THCA flower as well, it's it, you can't trust the pictures. Yep. Yep. That's one thing I like about the local place here. If I buy from CBD Plus, because they they run it very much like a how Colorado dispensaries were in the old days, and they have all the jars out. <clears throat> They'll let you smell it. You know, you get a real good. It's really nice. I mean, I, they're they're awesome. Really get to check out what you're buying before you buy it, which is really cool. I miss that old fashioned. You know, get to look at. It's just nice. You see all the product. Check it out. Yeah. You know, I was just in Vermont, and that's how it was. I was like, "This is refreshing mm. after being in a Connecticut dispensary." Because I just had the tablet, oh, yeah. and you walk up to the guy, and he's like, "Do you need anything else?" And he tries to sell you a bong before you check out, and you're like, "Why would I buy a uh, seventy-five dollars six-inch beaker from you? This doesn't really add up, my friend." No. Right. Oh, I wonder if they get a commission on them. Mm. Yeah, I wonder. Probably. I mean, at least in some places, I would imagine. Well, so try to sell bonds. No to kidding. That checks out. 
Yeah. Especially if there's like no tip jars. I know some dispensers will do tip jars for their bud tenders. If there's no tip jars, I bet there's a commission on some of that shit but for I, sure. What am I tipping somebody for in Connecticut at least? I mean, I can get in some states if somebody walks yeah. you through a whole bunch of different flowers and yada. That's right. different. Am I, I, right. I, I made my order on the tablet in the front. No one yep. walked up and tried to help me. I was hella no. confused because nothing has the right name once again. So I was standing there on my <laughs> phone as well as your dumb tablet trying to figure out just what the dang genetics of this thing is. I can't see or smell it. I'm supposed to, for some reason, trust your photo. Your photo shows some packaging I'm not going to even get it in because we're not allowed to have that packaging. And No, that's and crazy. Like, eh. Hope. Yeah. It's good. If it's that person's good. asking for a tip, they should be slapped. Also can't open you know, your own products that come out in the already stapled bag until you get to your house to like double check. Even after you paid, I would wish I could have just done that in that place before mm. I left. No. The dispensary sound like it's – bro, dispensary does sound like they're terrible. The and it's some are great, some suck. Yeah. <laughs> and it's overpriced. Yeah. I mean, Vermont was overpriced, but it was nice. I, I, I saw like four different flowers. I chose one, got some pre rolls because they had a good sale on them. Where I don't know, it was good. Yeah. yeah you can find, I mean, I have, granted, I haven't been to a dispensary in a, you know, at least three years since Arizona, but. You can find good deals, but I mean, once the hemp side blew up and the, you know, THCA, stuff, I, there's just, it, there's, you know, granted it drove down prices and it just made it, I mean, those few companies that we did not mention at the beginning, we just, I mean, come on, you know, come on. <laughs> hey, 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 bro, they, bro, they kicking the dispensary, they kicking the plug. They kicking oh, everybody. yeah. Everybody's yes, ass. They fucking slapping them, bro, hitting them with jabs, bro. Oh, yeah. makers, bro, fucking them up, Oh, bro. yeah. Yeah, it's dab, crazy. dab, punch. <laughs> I mean, they was on flour. It's amazing, you know. Yeah, they was yeah. on concentrates. It's just crazy, insane, hard to believe. Yeah. People. Imagine spending the same price that you would spend on a zip of some decent flour. You know what I'm saying? On an ounce of concentrate. Yeah, I it's mean, possible. It's it possible. <laughs> is it's just kind of. I want to understand why it's so cheap. <laughs> yeah, I I'm I right there with you. Down like, are they getting? I. I very much wonder. I I I, I I I have a I ha yeah. What happens to the isolate and the diamond extractions that don't reach the purity levels that you see the common hemp products at? Yep, that's been yep. a question in my head yep. recently. Because if you could go like, you'd have to backtrack a few more steps than I even could <laughs> on who's like actually doing these extractions, because if exactly you find out, I'm sure. I, Unless they literally achieve that purity level every single time, there's got to be some labs that aren't, right? And right. And wouldn't that be a discounted product at that point? You could make the. Yeah, I would imagine so. Someone, there's going to be a market for that. My someone would buy it. How some of these. What I would say made is like they're just. Maybe they about... have that connection. Yeah. yeah. The isolate does have a super duper strong, like super strong nose. And usually, you know, isolate is a neutral thing. Isolate should also not have a very, those, yeah. yeah, bro, that shit's kicking. They got a very <laughs> strong, like, lemon. It's a very strong lemonine profile off of it. Like, very gassy. Like, I ain't going to say very gassy. It's like a soapy lemon. Is it a little yellow tint to it, or is it pure white? Yeah, for sure. Okay. A little yellow tint. It still got, you can see the turf. It still got some turf in there. Sure, sure, sure. I feel like yeah. that's why it's so cheap. Cause it's like still terps in it compared that's, to being like completely all white. Raw. Yeah. Yep. And it's, it's still sticky too. Like compared to like my, a lot of that should be like, uh, like powder. It should not powder. Like I'll show you, I could pick it up. You can't really do it. I mean, not to say that you can't do that with isolate, but when you pick it up, it automatically like crumble. It should like powder sugar. Sure. It's, it's more like, mm. I don't know, more like crumble. I said, oh, yeah. 
I mean, it's not even a bad thing if it's just Mm-mm. like uh, they didn't ext- uh, why it always seems like lemonine's the hardest thing to extract out at the end. Like some of it just seems to stick around even on some. Okay, yeah, I see for sure. Yeah, ain't really that much red glow on my fingers and shit how it normally would be. No, yeah, right, right. I get you. It's more it got some moisture to it. But just gives it a little flavor, you know. Gives it a, a still probably. What do you think? Ninety five plus percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. THCA. But we'll wonder if it's just only turfs left behind at that point. I gotta go like refresh on these. That's I know. I'm wondering the same thing. What you said? What? Wonder if it's the possibility of other stuff being left behind as well. Is it just pure turps left behind? What is? I mean, it should. It might be some other cannabinoids still in there. I won't be surprised. Well, I Did it? The extraction ingredients is what I. What oh I yeah, yeah, that. yeah. Oh yeah, like right. solvent. Too. Right. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But I probably better than smoking a D eight cart. <laughs> oh, that's true. It'd yeah, be nice if we saw the days when solventless stuff got down to be as cheap as distillate and other things, though. That would be beautiful, you know. It does limit the product set. It does. We can create at that point, which it is does. One thing to think about. Yeah. Um, that's ends up with a very oily texture. I, I, we would have great products. We would have rosins and hash yeah, Right, rosins, right, uh, right. <laughs> It'd be great. But it would be I phenomenal in a card or a dab of it, but like solvents are used for all of your sugars, all of your batters, all of your many things, many, many mm-hmm. things, diamonds, isolates, yep. Yeah, distill it. But what's funny is you can you can achieve, you you can't necessarily see if, you can naturally. There are some strains that will naturally sugar up really well, um, but they're they're a rare breed. But you can have like a naturally buttery solvent list that you can then True. warm down and shatter out if you want. Now again, longer process, more part of the reason for the price, you know. But it's like it'd be nice if we could get to that place where you could have someone like company who shall not be named that does really cheap good concentrates but have that be totally solventless and it's that price would be crazy oh yeah okay i see yeah pretty sticky for sure not nah, it's sugar and you crumble see it oh, okay oh, okay huh ganja bear is getting high high <laughs> ganja bear is getting high high well let me load up one with you it's, it's five till let me load up one damn I, I guess I don't know it's phenomenal companies are still pushing in mm. this concentrate direction oh absolutely with the random <laughs> bits of the fed popping up in legal states maybe it's good that it's happening in the het market instead <laughs> mm. yeah right seriously though Know the advice for everybody out there. Because oh make sure y'all preheat y'all dab bowls. Oh, yeah. Any bowl will concentrate, bro. Preheat that bit, bro. Don't be busting your lungs. Don't be completely just ruining those terps because you already are in the first place. Fair, fair. You want to let that melt down? Don't burn it. But let it melt down to that bowl. Like especially with isolate and diamond type ones. All right. Anything with whipped in terpenes probably too. Best let them sink a little bit. Oh yeah, for sure. Got to keep smoldering. Cheers. Looking around for Bond a of water and Cheers. I without one. For everybody out there, make sure you sip something before you rip your bowl. I'm a bad example right now because I forgot my water. (laughs) 
to disappear for a moment. <laughs> <clears throat> That Oreo is nice. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Hey, 420 coming up, everyone. 420 next weekend. 420. A lot of sales Six days. started. Um, guys, don't wait till the day to make your purchases. Yes. Uh, if anything, if a company has some crazy deal, they sh you should have been watching their price increase for the last couple weeks. <laughs> Because yeah, right. Most companies, uh, the fact that they're marking off 30% right now is crazy. For example, my favorite 420 discount, if we're going to jump into things that maybe people should look at, is go look at Planet of the Vapes. You're getting, I forgot what percentage discount it was. Why did I forget it? Uh, I don't know. They went crazy on the 420 sale. It's like 25% wow. off. That's what it is. And they have products wow. such as the Mighty, the One, the Lobo. The One is the One, bro. Trust and believe. I got the Mighty. I got the, I mean, I got the Lobo and the One. And that One still hit, you know, just that Lobo cap. That One is so nice, dude. So nice. If you can get that for less than $100, bro, you're, bro, bro you in That's there. That's an incredible deal. In there. Yeah, I've never quite seen the prices get this low. I mean, even the packs, I wouldn't recommend that one, but 160 <clears> instead of 200. 200 is already cheap compared to what you're going to see yeah, in wow. them, like smoke shops for. That's my favorite. Ganja Bear is kind of the deal guy. Maybe before we. How are we. Do we have a giveaway we have to announce? I thought so, right? Bro, guys. We do got a giveaway to win. I was giving away a Liddy Log and 10 grams, but a bag of mine got lost up in transit. It's been in transit for eight days. Not eight days. Since the eighth. My bad. It's been in that bit for like six days. I think so. Might still show up. Might still show up. Might not. But I don't have it. 10 grams. He's got to substitute the 10 grams. Yeah. Okay. Substitute the 10 grams. Might have to substitute the 10 grams. But most definitely, most definitely, without a doubt, that Liddy Log is in there. In there. You're going to have a nice hash hole for 420. Now. Hell yes. I don't know, bro. I could. I don't know what I'll put this in, though. You know what I'm saying? Nah. Uh, now, I could fuck with y'all on some little crumble, on some little isolate. Maybe both mixed together. Ooh. Really trying to get them crazy. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to consult. Because I really don't have anything to put any dabs in. But if I find something, I definitely could. Probably won't be that hard. I don't know, though. I got to do something instead of that two gram. That bag is not looking too fucking nice. It's been in transit for a long time. I'll just direct order them a 10 gram, but we'll have to just figure out what site has it. Okay, cool. So we'll do the drawing later and post okay. it in the Discord <clears throat> for everybody once we figure out where the 10 grams is coming from. And then maybe Ganja Bear throws that little surprise in there. Otherwise, guys... Any quick 420 deal guys ready to throw out there? People throwing crazy. Big 420 off. deals. A lot of people have had their 40 and 50% off due to legislation wise, guys. Sad discounts from a lot of our favorite Tennessee brands over the last few weeks as they try to liquidate their products. DVD um, have the risk. My bad. I mean, do that, but like, uh, obviously, they need to sell the items. So. If you want to stock up on some of those items and help these brands liquidate, that's great. CBD Hemp Direct has 40 something. $44 up with code CBD VIP. Huh. And it's not bad. Wow. I have one. I'll turn it into snow caps. <clears throat> or if you uh, do your research, watch my last video 
my recent video, find out where this came from. I might have said it in there if I did. I don't know, bro. But it's a link somewhere with a discount code on that video, on my last video. So you can do your homework, bro. Do your research, bro. You can get yourself a $44 zip, then a zip of isolate for $150. Put them together. You got yourself some snow caps for $420 on the fucking low. True. You can keep making them back to back to back to back to back. That's true. Yep. Yeah. Then, good point. <clears throat> you know, who else got a deal? Bro, there's some deals just... I said, y'all better hop in that Discord. We got a whole, bro, hop in the Discord. We got a whole, like, chat for deals. It's this deal crazy daily. seeing this market grow, though, because deals mean that, I mean, the deals are selling out quicker. That's half of the yeah. struggle with doing this for y'all at a point's notice. <laughs> yeah. Y'all really don't it's understand. It's like, we're thinking through the deals. We're like, no, that's sold out. No, that's sold out on Thursday. That's sold out on Friday. It, three things I would have shared with you sold out yesterday. Like, it, so many websites. I You can still time it where you just check them once a day and buy it, but I, I get it. That's not the most fun thing to do. Yeah. Companies um, like... That's why it's kind of cool to have the disco. Hey, we got to make a roll. How about something where we can... We're going to have something set up. We'll we'll set it up by the end of this week where if you join, we can have a tag where when some banger deal happens, it'll notify you and listen yeah. out what it is. So you get a notification like this just dropped now. You got If you want to buy it, you probably got to go get it. This might only increase the speed at which these things sell. <laughs> yeah, so, right. It, it's <laughs> going to be part of it, it, this is. You know, that's part of the effort. We got to help. Hey, but that's okay. <clears throat> then these businesses are going to have to find more supply because we're yes. increasing demand. Apply and demand. Business 101. Economics. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Weednomics. Hempnomics. Hempnomics. Hey, that's exciting. But that means with that giveaway drawing happen, Ning. We're going to have a, another giveaway being posted. Uh, we want to give away 15 grams of moon rocks. So we're going to have a question, which is, when was the highest you've ever been? You'll have to just go into the Discord, go to that weekly giveaway section, and tell a quick story about what made you high as could be one day what was it what was the combination and you can tell a story about what happened too but you know you, you don't gotta type too much if you don't want to <clears throat> i know sometimes like you know keyboards can be annoying <laughs> <laughs> i already know my answer it's gonna be the first time i ever had an edible oh god <clears throat> bro, sometimes some edibles are dude right. it was it was oh my lord I was so dumb. I didn't know anything about edibles. I drank a 250 milligram can of punch from a dispensary on the way home because this was back in the days. I I was young. I lived with my parents. My parents didn't know. I was like, I got to hide this. I got to chug this on the way home. Got home. I melted into my dad's recliner. I was like trying to remind myself how to breathe. I was like, oh, it was, it was I was higher than I was so I stoned. Some drinks are <laughs> so different. Stoned. Dude, they and I was my first edible ever, and I I had about a ten minute drive home. I'm just, it was about the size of one of those old Sobe drinks. I chugged it like I drank, I downed it, and it was oh, I was so fucked up. <laughs> Bro, I'm thinking about making a little tincture hunch punch for four twenty. Do that it, jungle juice boy, with Do some it. Tahitian treat. Ooh, uh, it, people <laughs> would definitely vibe with a good old infused cocktail on it. Yeah, especially if, well, I, I'm telling, I think a lot of people's most high they've been stories have cannabis drinks involved. If you haven't tried cannabis drinks, they, they hit really different. hit different than other edibles. Yes, it can be in combination of smoking, but something about the fact that they're like the original nano cannabinoid yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you consume them differently. The fact that you consume a bit put it down consume a bit. it's not like when you eat an edible and you chow it all right because that all hits you at once these cannabis drinks hit you in waves up and down 
all around. <clears throat> and they hit up you and fast. down and all around. They hit you faster, way faster. Yeah, like twenty <laughs> yeah, they minutes do. most times. It's like, wow, already. Yeah, yeah always surprising you just that yeah. little bit. Making me think of like the Keef Colas back in the day, the can of punch. Keef man. Cola. Keef Cola, bro. Oh, they came in like a uh, root beer bottle, bro. Mm. They had root beer. They had like uh, lime, tangerine. They had a lemon one. They were so good. That is. Keef Cola. It sounds phenomenal. Yeah. I, I, there's. I don't know. I wish. That's all dink, dink, these dink, dink. legal limits would stop changing because. I know. We had. <clears throat> even good THC drinks and liquor package stores up until all of these states started changing the laws and forcing them to drop the milligram, drop the milligram, drop. Now you can get yeah. at most in most places, five milligram ones. I, I, I don't mind drinks being only like 20 milligrams. I feel like that's a really good. Yeah. Bit, but like, it's yeah. just sad that they keep pushing it. Down. Even I know. I say it's in the legal markets. They have edible limits of 20 milligrams per serving. Mm. So that means like in Massachusetts, I'm pretty sure the drink limit is because like in a can, you can argue there's two servings. If you really want right. to, you sure. can get 40 milligrams yeah. in a can. Yeah, you can't makes really sense argue more per serving. That. Yeah, right, right. It's, that makes uh, a lot of sense. It's tough. <laughs> this is 45 servings. <laughs> This is why I love the syrups. Yeah, right. You know, the Makes syrups sense. are great. You can get like 32 servings in a bottle, right? You pour yeah. six of those in your <laughs> Fanta. And boom, yep. Boom. That, <clears throat> that, 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 uh, and I'll post my story with the weekly giveaway just to make the weekly giveaway have a little bit extra of a reason to go. It, it does involve definitely some can of syrup. It God, you're just thinking of something. A zoo. It was a lot of fun. I just thought about it. What happened? Could I make a can of syrup with the isolate? I believe so. Is the think, isolate, yeah. you should be able to make a super easy sugar. Yeah. And so if you make the quick, easy sugar, then all you got to do is, what is it called? Dilute it into like an almond milk. I would do an almond milk over another milk because yeah, <clears throat> right. <laughs> Regardless, yeah. look forward to all of y'all's answers. Hope to see y'all next week. Always <clears throat> a pleasure. We're gonna get back into the swing of this. Peace, love. Later, do this, guys.